And we back. Shouts out to y'all for clicking the video. Got a show with uh, Brian Bars. Want to talk Cowboys and a little bit of draft. Uh, just letting y'all know before we get into the video, Brian's Wi-Fi was just Wi-Fi in just a little bit, but it's okay because that's not the norm. We normally bring you high quality H2O. We just ran into a little bit of a snag this time, but I know you're going to value the information. And if anything, just lean into the audio real quick. You know, if you got to watch the show with your eyes covered, just watch the show with your eyes covered, all right? Uh, this is going to be one of many collaborations with me and Brian Bars, and we just ran into a little bit of a snag, but I know y'all love us to pieces, so it's okay. Can we love y'all back? All right, y'all hold down with the Doski Walls and get into this content, man. Appreciate you. Hit the like, subscribe, peace. Brian Broaddus, Brian Broaddus, welcome back, welcome back. One hundred five three to fan Dallas Cowboys dot com. What else you do? You do everything else, sir. What else is it? Man, when you get a kid in college, you got to do a lot of things. You know how it is, man. When you do this radio business, mm -hmm. if you're in TV, you could have one job. If you're in radio, you got to have seven. But, uh, yeah, I got a son that's uh, hanging out there and down in Austin doing quite well. So I've got to put together a bunch of gigs. But always a pleasure to be with you, sir. Always look forward to this when we get a chance to visit. I hope it's a lot more this year. I really, really do. 100%, sir. People keep tapping us on the shoulder saying that this is the thing that needs to happen. And, you know, I never want to have you around to talk nonsense. I don't want to just, hey, Brian, what's – Cowboys, you know, I just, just, I don't want to do easy yeah. stuff. I want to really hit you with the thought provoking. I want to hit you with the real debates that's going on right now. So thank you for being here, sir. Shake my hand. No problem, man. Let's do this. I want to get you with two easy cowboy questions. And these are just general da da da. And then I got some real draft stuff for you. Um, there's a lot of cowboy nation that I'll just say they, they feel a certain way about Mike McCarthy coming back. Hey, cool. Yeah, fine. I can give I I can give Mike McCarthy credit for one thing. If it if it goes bad, he he finds a way to fix it. He doesn't do the ego thing. He'll fire his best friends and all that stuff. But boy, it was a great big mess uh, last week versus the Green Bay Packers and him and some of the players come on social media and they say they want to run it back. Now, running back sounds bad to me because that just means you want to be good in the regular season, lose all the you know lose all the good teams, come to the playoffs and get destroyed in the first round. I don't think they want that to happen again. So what can they do when they run this thing back? What can they do differently to keep from getting smoked in the playoffs in the first round by a team that they're absolutely better than? Yeah, that's the, um, that's the question now that uh, – that's the question I think that Jerry Jones asked Mike Lombardi mm – -hmm. uh, Mike Lombardi, <laughs> Mike McCarthy. I was talking to Mike Lombardi this morning. But, yeah, the um, – you know, when when Mike had to sit down with Jerry and Steven and, and maybe even Will, he had to explain his plan, you know, and, and listen, he's he's trying to say the thing that bothers me the most of part of his plan was before the season when he let Kellen Moore go and he was taking over the play calling, he talked about running the football. He talked about how they need to be better running the ball. And so you know, I'm sure he told Jerry and Steven, yeah, you know, and then they make the commitment to go get, you know, with Tony Pollard with the franchise tag. That's $10 million right there. You know, there, there was just so much of a disconnect there that some things that they really thought, I think some of the biggest problems they had was they thought they could run the football with the current group they had. They thought that they could go light at linebacker and get away with it because of so much, how much big nickel and dime that, that uh, Dan was playing. So there were some things that Mike and, and probably the staff thought, you know, hey, we could do this. You know, what's really what's what's what happened to him this year, though, is their center wasn't good enough. Their right tackle at times wasn't good enough. And so now, you know, people are saying, well, geez, they got three Pro Bowl linemen. You know, they got two Hall of Fame linemen. Well, they weren't good enough at tight end. They weren't good enough at center, and, and they weren't good enough at right tackle at time to really run the ball. And they and they ran the ball with a guy who Skip Pete, the previous running back coach, told us that if you make him the bell cow, there are going to be problems there. And he wasn't ready for that. You know, he he he's a tough guy. He you know he gives you everything he has, but for what they were asking to do. So I think that the, the philosophy was different. You know, it, it was, was I think the philosophy went different. I think the philosophy was off in what they were trying to do, sure. you know, and things that that Mike wanted to do. And it came down to, damn, you, you know, you had a you had a MVP quarterback this year. You know, you had a you had a top three wide receiver in the league. It I got to the point where Vosh, I was like thinking they're not going to be able to run the ball, not the way they're currently configured, not the way they're looking right now, and it's going to turn into throwing the football. And 
unfortunately they met a team in Green Bay that figured that out that they like they're not going to run we just got to stop them from throwing the ball and they did a great job with their defense and but I think this this whole thing with the philosophy they got it wrong with their run game and they got it wrong with you know but I think some of the big nickel stuff from a, uh, with with Dan was just out of necessity but it had to be out of necessity because they went short at linebacker that's that's the I think that's the thing that that bit them in the rear this year is they had some fundamental things they really believed in going into Oxnard's training camp and then it was like a house of cards when uh, it it came down to the very end. Well, if I had to give an answer, Brian, I think that this coaching staff leaned too much on Jimmy's and Joe's, you know. Um, and I remember listening to Schottenheimer. It was one of his one of his coaching day press conferences or whatnot. And they asked him, hey, coach, what's, what's wrong with the run game, right? That's yeah. Mike, too. And nobody said what was wrong with the run game. They said, right. hey, all right, you know, man, we got a good group of guys. You know, we got a, you know, some, there's a lot of moving parts sure. in this thing. And, hey, if there's a, 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 if there's a room of dudes that can get it done, it's this room of dudes right here. And I think what that means to me is I think they're just leaning too much on players doing their job. And you should lean on players doing their job, Brian, until I watch right. Detroit. I watch Detroit Lions just, just, just getting ready for, for Cowboys versus Lions. They probably – got one of the best offensive lines in the league, but they don't lean on Jimmy's and Joe's. They do a lot of scheme stuff in the run game to make stuff work. Sure. They do a bunch of double trap type stuff. If their center can't get to the front side linebacker, they'll just say, hey, leave the one tech alone. This front yeah. side linebacker block is more important than the backside scoop on this one tech type of situation, right? And they do things to help their guys along on top of the idea that they got, what, four Pro Bowls on the offensive line? I don't think, I don't think the Cowboys did enough in their scheme to make it easier for the Joes to do their job. Brandon Cooks should have been a thousand yard receiver this year. He got a lot of touchdowns, though. He got eight touchdowns, but he should have been a thousand yard receiver. And I and I think he could have done that with CD Lamb getting 20 targets a game. I just don't think that they schemed Brandon Cooks enough. Brian Broaddus, how about this? How many times did you watch film and you go, boy, every time they did pre-snap motion, things just happen to work out? Boy, fun things happen when we pre-snap motion. But when we get into big games, we just don't do it. Or how many times have Brandon Cooks done this crossing right across him to, across the field? Sure. He's the fastest dude on the field. And we just stopped doing it. I don't think yeah. it's a I don't think it's a Jimmy and Joe thing. I think this this coaching staff leaned on their dudes when they should have been leaning on 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 scheme and how we're gonna do things and how can we make things easy. So if so when we're in the playoffs and Dak Prescott is forcing slants into cover two. He's forcing outs into cover three. He's forcing deep balls into cover four. The first thing that they teach you in football school not to do. I just think that sometimes this coaching staff gets a little sleepy, and I don't think they move with enough urgency in scheming things up. No, I don't think you're wrong about that. I mean, there was times uh, the first five weeks of the season that was clear, you know, that, you know, somebody – Somebody walked across the hall, and Mike likes to talk about that. It might have been Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn said, you're pretty easy to defend right now, the mm -hmm. way you're playing football. You know, and, and there's some things. And, you know, I think Mike's guilty sometimes of getting caught up of who's playing in the game. You know, with when the offensive line is is compromised and you've got Bass out there and Adoga and stuff. And I'm not asking you let it rip all the time, mm -hmm. but you got to have some confidence that those guys can get the job done. You know, I, I think there was – there, you know, we, we talked about, and to your point, you know, we talked about this last week into the Green Bay game. You know, the way the Green Bay runs the ball is they're going to block the backside. They're not going to let you just run guys free and stuff like that. They killed the Cowboys on that. You know, how can I sit here and watch film all week and say, hey, guys, you got to be ready for the ball to be cut back here. They're going to get the guy here. They're going to block the backside here. You know, how can I how can I be that guy? You know, and then all of a sudden you get in the game and you watch them do it over and over and over again. I'm like, my like, damn. I mean, you know, some, you know, I'm just, I'm just, a, I'm just an old scout, you know, doing radio now. I'm watching this tape and I'm going, you know, you got to know this is how teams do it. But that's, that's the, the great thing about the NFL and some of these, some of this college tape you watch. There are coaches that are very creative with their schemes sure. and how they get. There were some things that they were doing 
you know, when Dak, when they were really on the run in that middle, you know, portion where they were doing things with routes and stuff. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it was against the commanders and the giants and others, but it it looked like it's like, God, they got an idea of how to get these guys open. So to your point, I I think you're absolutely right. I, I think that they, you know, but they, they get paralyzed, you know, at, you know, weather injuries, things don't, always you know uh, kind of work out the way they need to be for this football team when when it comes to their especially their offensive football um you know they just they just they 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 kind of regress back to some of the the problems that they had earlier in the year and you know you know maybe i don't know maybe that's on the jones you know i would normally hear cowboy fans say what is jerry jones and i would think man how, how what does jerry have to do with this situation in particular yeah. but i tell you what there are two candidates on the market for head coaches, and they're first-year head coaches. And you'd be surprised about these first-year head coaches that just end up being better than everybody else. But there's a dude in Houston that can move his offense with damn Devin Singletary and Nico Collins and freaking Dalton Schultz. And there's a dude that coaches defense in Baltimore right now that's undefeated versus that Shanahan scheme. That seems better yeah. than these than these veteran coaches that that we have. But you know, I digress. I just move on from that. You know, we gotta keep doing. You know that. what though, Vaj? I think that to me, you know, uh, and I'm not defending Jerry Jones here. I'm I'm really not. But I believe that he's handed the reins to Stephen and to Will mm-hmm. about you know how they're going to you know how they're going forward. Jerry Jones is 81 years old. And I mean this no disrespect to this man because he gave me two careers in my life. Sure. He gave me a scouting job. And he put me in DallasCowboys.com. I appreciate that. But I'm saying this from respect. But I'm also saying this. I don't think that Will and Steven necessarily want change. I don't think they've got things rolling the right way when it comes to drafting, at obtaining personnel. They're not questioned. They're not going to be questioned by a Bill Belichick. They're not going to be questioned by a Mike Vrabel. They're not going to be questioned by – now, if they go get one of these young coaches, you know, these young coaches will probably not say something. They'll probably, yeah, whatever you guys want to do kind of thing. Mike McCarthy, my experience working in Green Bay all those years, Mike McCarthy, Ted Thompson picked the players. Mike coached the players. You know, coaches weren't super, super, super involved in the acquisition of the talent. And I think that Steven and Will are to a point where the continuity to them is super important. You know, they don't want to roll in here and have to like, wow, we got to change. We, we, we don't have the personnel. We're going to have to do exactly what we did with Parcells. At least Parcells gave us a chance. He told Mike Zimmer, he's like, listen, you can keep calling this 4-3 defense, but next year we're going to a 3-4. Just get ready for it. You know, we're going to get personnel. We're going to draft. And he did. The 2005 draft was the draft that turned things around from a a 4-3 front to a 3-4 front. But I think that Stephen, I keep saying this, Stephen will, it's continuity to them. They don't have to change everything, and they don't have to fight it with Mike. Mike will let them, you know, Mike will have his say on the personnel. Dan Quinn is, I think, far more active in personnel voice than what Mike McCarthy is. You can tell by the way they draft sometimes. So I just think that, you know, if you're, if you're going out there and getting one of those coaches you're talking about, and and they're two great candidates, you're absolutely right. But that means change. And that means we have to change the way that we're operating here, which means we have to maybe change ways we evaluate players, which means that every player that we didn't like, this year watching college players that now maybe those players come back in. Whoa, wait, we got to go back and and get these guys. No, we, we didn't think these guys were a fit now with a different coach. Oh, they're a fit. You know, most personnel departments are really can adapt that way. I think the Cowboys can adapt, but I just don't know if they want to adapt now Mm. because they've got it kind of rolling the way that they, they, they feel like it needs to be done. Nobody fights them on, Nobody fights them on going out and signing free agent players. They don't have a coach that, yeah, we we've got to have free agency. We've got to we've got to. They did something last year that they've never trading two picks for yeah. veteran players. Yeah. I, we we haven't seen that in a Dallas Cowboys team, you know. So sure. I think there's I think there's something to Stephen and him now taking the reins uh, from his dad. Sure, fair enough. We'll just uh, keep an eye on that. <clears throat> uh, let's yeah. see. Let's see. 
one last cowboy thing. Super easy. No problem. Yeah. And then we're going to get to some uh, <laughs> to some uh, draft stuff. That'll be really fun. Um, and, and we can kind of, you know, segue draft here, though. Uh, Cowboys top three needs going into the draft. I think you got big needs. And then I think you got like sneaky needs that you probably didn't even yep. didn't even think that you needed at first, right? Um, I had O line written down, but I'm I'm sure. just I'm just constantly thinking to myself, man, I got three All Pro dudes at O line, man. Do I really need more O line? But I'm an overkill type guy. I'm a you know I'm a I'm a former offensive lineman, and you know I just I just have a little bias. I think you should just draft O line every year, whether it be the you know sure. no matter what day it is, draft them every year because you just you just can't have enough of them. Um, but I really want to get better at center, and I want no insurance at right and no left tackle. What do you think about yeah. that? No, I, I totally agree with you. I, the one thing the Dallas Cowboys have proven is they can draft offensive linemen that are plug-and-play guys. Sure. That's, that is that is as sure as the sun coming up. That's as sure as Green Bay drafting a quarterback right there. Yeah. They, they, they will find a plug-and-play guy that can play. They do need a center. And, you know, the, their center's up in free agency. I Unless – I, I think they have to. I think some of the issues, and again, I, I'm just, I hate to do this to a kid, but, you know, there were times this year that he wasn't good enough. They need to be better at center. They just do. And so, yeah. And to, and, but, you know, the tackle situation, this is a really deep, I know you're diving into this, this yes, thing sir. like I am. Yes, sir. There's a lot of offensive tackles in this, in this draft mm -hmm. and, and a lot of good ones, sure. you know, and especially down where even Dallas is going to pick. Yeah. And Dallas, I think, <laughs> can even back, out of there and still get a good one. Yeah. So I think the centers are going to be close. I haven't seen the Georgia center yet, but I'm, you know, working my way that direction. Mm -hmm. I think the kid, the tackle at Duke uh, can, can probably be a center, could probably kick inside. And then you're watching that kid. Okay. So here you are, man, look at you throwing some, throwing some tape up on this guy. Yeah. That's what, you know, that that's, that's kind of where I feel like though, that you can, you can um, you know, maybe look at that, that position and say, you know, go out and get a guy uh, at that side. The, the kid at the kid at uh, the kid at Oregon uh, at Oregon is tremendous too. The Jackson Powers Johnson kid is is sure. really really good at Oregon. So I mean, I think it's going to be really really close when it comes to where the Cowboys are picking. Can they grab one of these offensive linemen to uh, to to be uh, to be part of their team? Brian, let me just tell you something about Graham Barton, left tackle. Yeah, from Duke. Yeah. The last time this Cowboys offensive line was truly ridiculous, your center was a powerful dude that you didn't have to hide. Yeah. Right? And you see this all the time, right? Where, you know, hey, our 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 center is our least powerful guy, but we can save him through combo blocks and, you know, things like that, right? Brian, right. these teams will isolate your center. They'll do it. Yeah. Whether it's yeah. uh whether it's, you know, a like a DJ Reader type guy beating up on him, a Quincy Williams yeah. beating up on your dude, a Leonard Williams, a Dexter Lawrence, yeah. they will find a way to isolate Tyler Biotish. And yeah. Tyler's just not as powerful as you want him to be. Could be him being right. hurt guy. I don't know. But I'm watching Graham Barton, right? And I just think mm -hmm. the the future of what center should be is let's find a big, strong, powerful dude and let's teach him how to snap. Let's just yeah. teach him how to snap. You know, I think football has, like, moved on in a way to where the tackles aren't the most concrete – the the most concrete players on your line anymore. Quarterbacks know how to deal with those edge dudes. When when Terrence Steele gets beat all day versus the Eagles that, that first game, Dak could have gotten sacked 12 times. But a lot of sure. navigating, a lot of moving, a lot of slipping, a lot of rolling. We saved Terrence Steele. When Tyler Biotis is getting bull rushed, there's nothing that Dak can do about it. So nope. if you can make me an offensive line that looks like Tyler Smith, Graham Barton, Zach Martin, I lose sleep at night. I lose sleep at how good my offensive line can be. Not only in pass pro, because the first thing that they taught me in zone block school, if you can deal with the A gap and if you can block the mic, yeah. you can run the football. You can do Absolutely. all those things with a powerful center. And that's something that Tyler Biotta has kind of been struggling at. No, you're absolutely right. And and everything you said is 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 spot on. The thing that's just so interesting about Barton is that when you watch him run block, there's always space behind him yeah i mean he is always creating you know he is creating he is playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage the 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 way he moves 
yeah, you know, the hand placement stuff, the football IQ, you know, you could you could just tell this guy's got awareness. That's the things you had like in Travis Frederick. You know, I mean, I, I admittedly I dinged Travis Frederick because I didn't think he was the athlete, but then you watch him play, you're like, damn, you know, I missed him. At Wisconsin, I missed his athletic ability. But you always talk about cutting a defense in half, you know, and the you know the way that they're able to get up on the second level or reach a guy or sure. reach a wide three technique on that outside shoulder, you know, guys like Graham Barton can do that. Sure. And you know, but can you? Yeah, can you? You know, can you put the ball in his hand, let him snap? I think everything else about him yeah. just screams, just screams. Even, okay, if it doesn't work out at center, I think he could play another position. But I do feel like that he is one of these guys that you can. At his size, you know, 6'5", 314, man, I would definitely try in him and get him, you know, to to be able to adapt to play that position. Powerful strike, powerful hands. If yeah. he happens to yeah. make a mistake, he can actually turn dudes if he has a latch on to him already. Uh, great yep. anchor, uh, fires off the line of scrimmage. That's something else too, Brian. Like on those down yep. blocks, if it's just some yep. dude in this gap, he fires off into the side of those dudes and really get them up out of there. And he's very underrated as a hand fighter. There's a there's a handful no, of times. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And this thing sure. the thing about him is like he is just relentless the way he attacks that defender. Sure. You know, I mean he just stays and, and and I've seen him play, you watch the tape and he's like the whistle's blowing and they're trying to separate guys and he's still blocking. Sure. And you're like going, okay, you know, here's one of these guys. Him and like I said, him and the him and the uh, the Oregon kid you know, or two, like I say, the Powers Johnson kid, the, these are mean guys. Sure. These are big, mean guys at, at center for you. Yeah. Thing about Jackson Powers uh, Johnson or whatnot, you really have mm-hmm. to watch all of his film, Brian, because the first game I watched, he was flinging himself around. He was oh, on sure. the ground a little bit. You know, technique was mm-hmm. a little weird. So you really got to watch all his film. But once you isolate what he's good at, he still flings his body into people, but he's yeah. a he's a mean dude. He's an aggressive yeah. dude, powerful dude. He's a fantastic help guy. If you're just blocking somebody and he ain't got nobody to block, he's a he's yeah. a he's a find some work. He's another slam into you and you don't see me guy. Um great feet, second level guy. Um out in space guy. Run just 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 yeah. th- this dude right yeah. here. Physical, but 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 you're gonna have to work on his balance. You're gonna have to work on him slinging his body and not just falling all over the place. But just mm-hmm. with a little bit of coaching, this dude can be a powerful center for you. No question. I, I think the thing about him is, and, and you're absolutely right about the about his balance at times. Sure. But the foot speed's really good. And yeah. The movement in space. I mean, when you watch him run. His feet don't come up off the ground. I mean, he kind of shuffles a little bit. Yeah. But, man, like the angles he plays with, the second-level stuff. I, I've seen games where he's gotten two blocks on one play. Yeah, You know, you can watch Texas Tech. You can watch Colorado, Utah, the games I watch. Sure. And he, he – I don't think he's the longest-armed guy, but, but he's going to get his hands inside and he's going to finish. Yeah. I mean, he is going to find a target on the move. I've seen him pull in the screen game, and you know, but you're, you're right. There's times where – he will lose his guy, and that's because of a little bit of the, some of the balance stuff that he that he was. There was some times too where little quickness off his shoulder gave him a problem. But sure. man, I, I just did not see a lot of negative plays for this guy. Um, and one thing that he does really well, and I'm not picking on the center that we have right now, but a lot of times mm-hmm. in the run game, our our current center, you know, Tyler Biot, whatever, he can't sustain yeah. a bunch of those run blocks. Like he'll get, yeah. like like yeah. he'll he'll start off good, right? But right. guys will come off of him, or he doesn't hang on to the guy because he's not driving his feet and and getting good movement on those dudes. Both of these right. guys, Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, they get movement on dudes and they sustain those blocks and. Backs hit the ground when those dudes are moving, man. So I like yep. those guys. Let me ask you this too, Brian. We're just we're just we're just talking about draft philosophy right now, and I'm going to get back mm-hmm. and tie all this in the Cowboys. What do you think about the small D lineman now? The smaller frame three tech now. You know, uh, I think everybody's in this in this race to try to find the new Aaron Donald type guy. And sure. what they end up getting is they find these athletes that would have been playing D end, you know, back in the day. But you know, these Olivers, these um, Cancy type guys, right? Mozzie mm-hmm. Smith, who's Mm. 291 pounds now, right? What do you think about these smaller D linemen? Because there's one in the draft at the very top of the board, Jerzon Newton. What do you think about these small tackles, D tackles? 
Yeah, I tell you what, the thing with Newton is he is super active. He sure. looks a little bit thicker though than your normal guy. Okay. You know, when you watch him play, uh, it, it's so disruptive. I, I think there's at that three technique spot. You know, it's our teams kind of figuring out a way to neutralize those guys. Sure. You know, are they are they worrying about are they are they figuring out that you know we could double these guys and they'll have problems? You know, with the but as long as you keep these guys on the move, mm-hmm. it, it 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 seems to work out for them. But man, I mean, this guy again, the highlights here are really because, like I say, he's he's got some strength to him as well. When you watch him, you know, in the hands, his quickness, the way he gets off the ball, the way he attacks, he could put guys, you know, in like a, in an off balance situation. Mm-hmm. You know, he understands like okay, get get the weight on the guy's outside foot, bring him back inside, or you know, or go around, just like we're seeing right there. That's the kind of games that he plays. He just is – he is so quick. But he he doesn't he doesn't look like a small guy. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? I, I, I don't know where where you are on this, Vash, but I was watching – like mo- a month ago, I'm watching Mozzie, and that's the whole thing when it came up. And I asked that question on the break one day. I'm like, does Mozzie – how much do you think Mozzie weighs? Sure. You know, and he – because he didn't look like a 329-pound guy anymore. You know, and I had people, well, he's down in the 293, 294 range. And I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Why is and you know, and so you're you're trying to get answers. You're trying to figure out is it Mozzie Smith? Is it Dan Quinn? Is it A D? Is it uh, Sharif Floyd? You know, Sharif Floyd during the draft was talking to us about, hey, I'd really like to have a three technique. We all kind of thought, well, okay, your three technique is Fahoko. That's the guy you were you were kind of talking about, you know. And but man, something you know, and and, and maybe, maybe with Mozzie, you know, the, it was uh, it was one of those things. He felt like he had to get quicker. Sure. But I, I think it wasn't. I don't think it was. I don't think it was that. I think Mozzie, when Mozzie, and I say this so much, when Mozzie gets off the ball, he can play. It's right. when he, it's when he goes back to his Michigan two gap days where he's read and then react yeah. that gets him in trouble. He he reverts back to. Uh, his previous scheme, and you know, I'm hopeful for the kid. But man, I don't understand. You draft a 329 pound guy sure. and allow him to lose damn near 40 pounds, you know, and try and play football for you. And you really <laughs> didn't didn't need Mozzie to be quick. He like like where he was is fine. He was quick for for 340. Like like that's fine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's I don't know. I mean, like I say, I. I that's the uh, that's the the old. There's an old song. And I'm an old crusty guy, as you know. Bob Seger had a song. He said he was working on mysteries without any clues. Mm. Uh, that's the one of the lines of the song. That's that's kind of where I'm at with Monty Smith right now. I'm working on mysteries without any clues. Wow. You know why they did what they did. No clue, but I think the uh, Cowboys are going to have an issue on their entire Uh, um, D-line, you know, just roster building or whatnot. Like, there were so many times in the Green Bay game where they just lined up in these big sets and there was nothing we could do. We just couldn't get bigger than what we were. Like, Hankins was, like, the biggest guy, and it's like, that's it. Yeah, Hankins was on the ground in that game far more than I've ever seen him on the ground. I mean, Green Bay did it. Green Bay did a damn good job, but we talked about how they run the football. They hand the ball to Jones. He's looking for the gap if they get it. But you know, you you get you get guys playing at depth. I know Brian Baldinger was doing some breakdowns of Bell and those guys playing at depth, you know, and it, it's just tough. I mean, teams were teams were not getting, you know, when when Dallas was good at it, and you know, there were a couple of runs where they they were they they were were they exactly where they needed to be in the run fits. But when they're bad in run fits, man, teams and can can take advantage of that for sure. There's been a lot of talk around the nation about the linebacker position. And yeah. linebacker to Dan Quinn is like D-line to Rod Marinelli. Makes us sick. Yeah. You just you just you just can't take anybody <laughs> and just plug them in there. Um yeah. position value is something that really gets people in a tizzy. You know, when I say, yeah. Hey man, we need linebackers, and they go, Well, you shouldn't get a linebacker in the first round, no matter how much you like them. Yeah. Well, yeah. Brian, this is my thing, man. Just just looking around the league. The league evolves every year. You got to keep up. If you look at the at the best defenses in the league, they all got studs off the ball linebackers, and they're not just dudes that you just like. These are dudes. Like like Fred Warner is yeah. a dude. Roquan Smith is a dude. Uh, yeah. C.J. Mosley, yeah. Quincy Williams, those are dudes. The Cowboys were the only team that you were looking at, and be like, okay, this team plays good defense. 
but they did not have a dude at Mike. We had a dude named Mike yeah. that could have played Mike, but he didn't. He played Edge. Yeah. I'm I'm looking to come out of this draft, Brian, with a yeah. dude that can come mm-hmm. in and play Mike linebacker for me. Okay, and I don't want to. I don't want to hear about well, he's an off-ball linebacker. Vash, the the value doesn't work. Position value only really works in the top five and in the in the top ten picks. By the time we get to yeah. twenty four, I don't want to second round guys. Yep. I don't. I don't want to miss a dude that's going to get yeah. taken at thirty six, knowing he's not going to get to fifty six. I want to yeah. really figure out what I have to do to get a linebacker here because. We could talk about the the top three or four linebackers in this in this draft here. They man, they not they're not going to be around for you late. And I'm not saying we need to reach for picks, but if there's a linebacker, I'm about to I'm about to show some film. If there's a linebacker on your board and he's in the 20s and we picking right there, don't just tell mm-hmm. me linebacker doesn't matter. You can find you one because the best teams in the league didn't just find them one. Yeah, no, you're right about that. It's uh. It's kind of like the running back thing. You 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 know we've we've talked about that before. When you oh you find a running back in the third fourth round, you know yeah Deuce Vaughn okay, wasn't, was yeah, wasn't ready. Deuce Vaughn wasn't ready. Wasn't ready. Yeah, but that's the that's the problem is that you get into this situation now, and you know the Overshown injury was huge. It really was. The the Van Der Esch injury was huge. It, it those things. It, you know you're playing on the you're playing on the run, trying to learn with Clark. Poor Bell. You know I mean he's a safety. He did the best he could. I mean, Dan Quinn, it, I said it before in some other platforms, it was a Band-Aid on an amputation. You know, it was just, you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't play around this. Yeah. You just couldn't play around it. And it, and it affected the way that they played. And so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of linebackers in this draft. I, I drafted, uh, I know that Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Sure. I drafted his dad in, um, uh, he's, his dad is uh, Stephen F. Austin in 1998. I drafted him in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the toughest players I've ever been around in, in my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was, he was, a, I mean, he was a pro. He was a pro. And his son looks like the, his son is not as big as he is dad, but his son's got that same get to the damn ball and sure. make things happen guy. Sure. He can play in coverage. I think he's quicker than his dad. Uh, this, you know, we always talk about sideline to sideline, but there's times where they run the ball inside on him, Notre Dame, and he just steps up and takes it on and then tackles the guy right there. And he ain't getting knocked back. Sure. He's six foot. He's 230 pounds. You know, yeah, shorter guy, sure. But, but man, I, I love the kid. And, and again, I'm a little bit – because I loved his dad. But yeah. there's other ones, too. The Wilson kid at North Carolina State, yeah, really good player, and Eichenberg uh, at uh, Ohio State, right. two of the top type of linebacker guys. You talk about guys that are around the ball, make tackles, play sideline to sideline, play mm-hmm. well in space, know how to play in coverage. Ball tends to come their way. Mm-hmm. It's on the ground. They get it. Ball's tipped in the air. They catch it. You know, yeah. there there's going to be some linebackers, but there are also some. You know, there's some guys too that are really, really, really good players that you're going to have to kind of figure out. I mean, if you're, if you're looking for size, I mentioned Eichenberg, I mentioned Wilson, mm-hmm. and we'll see where they go in the draft. Sure. I really do love this kid, Kalen Deloach sure. from Florida state. Mm-hmm. The problem is Kalen Deloach is six one two fifteen yeah. right now. Yeah. But he makes every damn play sure. for Florida state, sure. you know, but he's probably not, he's probably not what you need. Maybe he's, maybe he's a safety guy for you. You know, the kid, uh, Cooper, Texas A&M, 6'3", 230. Oh, you know, bro. I mean, there's oh, there's there's guys like that. I mean, there's there's some guys in this draft. The Cooper Cooper reminds me of Overshone. When you watch him play, he mm-hmm. reminds me of Overshone at Texas a little bit, mm-hmm. you know? And, and that looked like that was going to be okay for the Cowboys. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, this guy, Cooper had 10 sacks yeah. as, a line, as a linebacker. I mean, I'm not saying he's – but at least he has a feel, Yeah. you know? I mean, when he's not accounted for, he will punish you. Sure. That's the type of player he is. Yeah. Like, I'm just watching film on him, Brian. Just, he gets downhill. He sees sure. it. He processes yeah. it. He's aggressive. You can't throw bubbles against him. You can't, no. you know, you know, throw the arrow routes with the running backs. If you go back to 2022, uh, Texas a versus Bama, you get to see him running around with Jameer yeah. Gibbs, a dude that ain't slow. 
right? Or you just watch his film, you just see him dropping back in Tampa too. You see him, uh, 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 you just see him in man coverage. You see him versus the run. Like right. this, this dude here, Brian. I don't, I don't know what his final draft grade is going to be. It's probably going to be in the second round somewhere. Maybe I hope yeah. I would, I would throw a party and go to jail if he's available at fifty six. But I don't think he's going to be available at 56 this dude's no, a game I, I don't either I, yeah you know and, and i really trust i think we all trust dane burglar a lot and if you look at dane's second round mock he's got him somewhere i think at 53 55 somewhere right around there yeah but man i mean there's these kids these linebackers i i, I mean we haven't we've got just through just a small group of them right now and there'll mm -hmm. probably be some others that show up but these plays that you're showing right now, I mean, this guy played against some big time competition and was super productive. He got better every year he played. Yep. I mean, he really, really, really did. Yep. That's my alma mater right there taking it on the chin. Old Ellis and you. Sorry to do so, this. So yeah. Sorry to no, do that, this. that happens, man. <laughs> that happens. But yeah, man, you know, just just um I, I, I don't think cowboys like sometimes you can you can see how they move in terms of like player acquisition. And it just seems sure. like they're ignoring positions. You know, like 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 yeah. when when we moved on from Cooper, we were very lazy with wide receiver that next year. You know? So right. I just don't want us to be lazy with linebacker. Like Van Der Esch might yeah. retire. Um Overshone, yeah. we have a lot of plans for him, but Dan Quinn is not here so we don't know if 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 the next dude wants a long yeah. lanky safety linebacker type dude you know yeah. um all the other linebackers that were on the team have been cut and now yeah. there's micah that plays edge or if he's gonna play we don't know if he's gonna play edge so i just think linebacker right. is just a, a a a big question mark on that position and i just i just don't want to get caught slipping i don't want to be lazy and just say oh we'll just find somebody later on i want to really yeah. attack linebacker position yeah, I, I think that I think that too. We, you you remember the draft with the Van Der Esch draft? I think we yes, had sir. that one. Uh, we had that one identified like in March. Yeah, you know, what I mean, like we're all like, "Wow, this looks like a Dallas Cowboy player." Mm -hmm. You know, this looks like you know. And then all of a sudden, they start meeting with them. It was more and more. You're starting to hear more information about that. Sure. I don't think they're going to. Um, I think I like this. The, like the way they try and keep an open mind about the draft when it comes to best available player because it's helped them a lot of times. Mm -hmm. It really has. Yeah. Whether it's Zach Martin, whether it's uh, you know, whether it's uh, you know, with Parsons, whether it's Diggs, you know, any one of these guys. I mean, it, they've done a CD Lamb. They they you know, oh heck, they need a, they need an edge. Well, CD Lamb's sitting there. Oh, yeah. draft him. Okay, boom, here we go. So, I trust them to do the right thing that way. I do trust them. The one thing that's good about Will McClay being a former defensive coach, I think he has an understanding about this mm -hmm. about these these linebacker positions. So. Hopefully that's uh that's something that could carry over. I don't want them to force it, sure. but I do like the, the the initial small sample size that I've seen so far. I do like the kids that are they're they're in those positions. I really do. Sure. Um, one last thing. Who is your favorite um tackle in this draft so far? O line tackles. Who's your who's your favorite so far? Or if you have two, tell me those two because they're all different. You're talking about my offensive tackles? Yes, sir. Offensive tackles. Yeah. Offensive tackles. Offensive tackles. Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite tackle, of, co of course, is going to be uh, Alt from Notre Dame. Sure. I, but there's no way in hell, you know. I mean, he's he's the one guy that I really – I think he's going to be at the top of the list. I know people talk about the Penn State kid. Sure. Um, he's a he's a good player as well. If you – if you you know, I know that Dane mocked the Guyton kid from Oklahoma. And I, I was like – I was kind of – you know, I was like, oh, man, I don't know if I would do that one. I don't, you know, I don't know, but there's the thing about him. I think th his footwork bothered me and his, his pad level bothered me because he's so tall. He's six, seven, he's three twenty eight, yeah. And it's hard for him to bend his knees at times for how tall he is. Yeah. So I, I was kind of like, man, I, I don't know about that one. You know, I didn't, I didn't talk to Dane about it or anything, but I just kind of said, Hmm, okay, well put this, uh, put this on the back burner. So, I was not a big fan of Patrick Paul from Houston. Sure. That was another one that I was really not kind of overly sewn on, uh, sold on six seven three fifteen. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me a guy that maybe towards the back, if Dallas were Morgan. to drop the tackle and trade back, Jordan Morgan or trade back, it's Morgan. Jordan it's Morgan. Jordan Morgan at Morgan. yeah at Arizona. 
Yeah. That's that's my guy. So you and were just talking that, about Guyton. Sorry, you were just talking about Guyton being yeah. tall and just not being able yeah. to bend. Morgan is six five, and he and he yeah. bends like his hat he level bends. is perfect to be yes. that tall. Yes. That dude sits yes. down, and yeah, you know, man, what I like about it, man, the first the first film I watched was UCLA versus uh La Tu I, I know I said it wrong. Yeah, but <laughs> La Tu, yeah, La Tu La Tu from yeah, he gave him. Yeah. A long day. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's see what he's like as a pass rusher. They had to move him to the other side. They had, they to, had move. to move him away from him. Yeah. Jordan <laughs> Jordan Morgan from Arizona. Fantastic with him. Fa- fantastic movement. Fantastic feet. Everything smooth. Sure. He all he he always gets to his landmark. The angle is perfect. Yeah. The hands are perfect. Right. And I'm like, man, you you fantastic pass blocker. What's your run game like? There are some yeah. challenges in the run game, but his down sure. blocking and his reach yeah. blocking, top tier because he's a He's yeah. a full blown athlete, hand strength. Yeah. He's another dude that once he gets hands, he can he can turn you really good. Man, I'm looking at yeah. Jordan Morgan, man. I don't think he's gonna be like right now, he's a dude that's you know, we're looking at in the twenties, but Jordan Morgan may sure. may low key just climb up the board. We see dudes like Latham, Mims, Fuanga. He's gonna pass those yeah. guys because I think yeah. Jordan Morgan is ready to play right now. No, I I I man, I I totally respect what you're saying, and I think you're dead balls on right about this guy and sure. you know because the, to me he wears number 77 and yeah. i was thinking man there's some traits he has that are like tyron smith like mm-hmm. you know i'm just kind of when you but the one thing you, you talk about his hands he carries them a little low sure. and so sometimes you kind of see him but when he sets them it's man it it's guys stop it's they just bam they yeah. stop and so but he's got the bend. He's stable. He, mm-hmm. I mean, he's just so natural in the way he moves, the pad level, the balance. He's a guy that right now, like you said, there's all these people are talking about the Pauls and the Mims and the, you know, and the other and the other the other tackles. Latham from Alabama. I know people are really high on him, but man, this this kid is going to he's going to test really well. The eye test is really good. The film is really good. I'm sure he's going to interview well. This is a guy that it, it, that's going to start out like probably not, you know, maybe the top of the second round, and then he's going to vault himself up into the middle of this draft after they kind of figure out some of these other kids. Well, it was fun while it lasted, Brian, but this this dude, there's there's no way he's he's going to be around for us. We're going to have to settle <laughs> for like, uh, you know, Mims. And, and look, even even Mims is good. You know, uh, uh, Fuang. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. all those guys are cool, man. But this dude, Jordan yeah. Morgan, there's no way he's going to be. He's, he, he just, it's just so easy for him to play like this. You know, you just watch him. He comes out. And like I say, just kind of this. Okay, you're going to sit him at the line of scrimmage right there again. They moved. They moved Latu away from him yeah. because he just – but it was a good matchup. Man, you got to watch good versus good. Yeah. And, you know, Latu got him a couple of times. But it was it was a, it was a tough, tough game for uh, for our UCLA guy there. Yeah. So is um, Jordan Morgan going to be like a bowl game guy, like an all-star game? Because I would love to see him just one-on-one with some dudes. I you know, I need to, to check uh, – I need to talk, talk to, uh, to Nagy about that jim Nagy, who's the director of the bowl game him and i uh scouted together uh, so i jim and i have a really good relationship i don't know if he's a senior bowl guy or not I, i'm mm-hmm. sure there's i'm sure i can figure that out but um yeah he's his workouts are going to be trust me you we're we're on the right guy right now sure. that's going to be one of those we get to into march early april everybody's like wow here's one of the name of the top tackles yeah. Morgan's going to be in that list of the top tackles for sure. Brian Broaders, this was fantastic. Like I knew it would be when you and Let's I do get it together. again sometime, man. We have a if, long. You put me on your put me on your calendar, man. Just okay. You, you, you could just stay. Hey, text me and say, listen, I need to do a show this week. I'll you know I'll make time for you, man. I mean, sure. I got you know, like in the morning. I don't have to watch. Uh, I don't have to watch film anymore for the uh, for my pro uh, free agency. I'll start watching some tape, but mm-hmm. I'm just banging through this college tape. So if you want to talk some draft anytime. Let's bang through some of these players. I'd love to talk to you about it. One hundred percent. It will be a very fun draft season, and and I just want to I just want to give you give you you know props and praise and flowers. You know I do this because of you. You know when I was working at Pizza Hut and I was smelling like dirty yeah. dishwater. I was listening to the draft show, man, and I was like, hey, can't wait to do this one day. So 
I'm walking yeah. into this draft season and I'm planning on working harder than I've ever worked because I know me and you're going to have a lot of conversation. I just want to be Yeah, ready. I appreciate that. No, I, yeah. I appreciate all the guys and gals out there that are willing to to put – to put the time in for it, man. There's there's resources. It's not perfect, mm -hmm. but you can figure out ways to get around it, and you know, and kind of get an idea of these players. And you know, you don't have to be a scout. You can see with your own eyes if a guy's getting beat, if a guy's giving up plays, if a guy's making plays, if a guy's moving quick. You can see all these things. Yeah. Just trust your eyes. Don't don't you know? You can listen to us talk, but trust your eyes. You know, you might not agree with us on a player. But you know what? That's cool because not all scouts – I've sat in rooms and fought with scouts that didn't agree with my opinion. Sure. And I didn't agree with theirs, you know, but it works out. So I love the draft. I love this time of year. I love the fact we had our 11th anniversary of the draft show yesterday mm -hmm. was the uh, the 11th, 11th year that we've done this. So I'm really, really proud of that, and I'm proud of all the people who are a part of it. And I really do look forward to working with you this year on the draft. I think we can have some fun talking about these things. I'll – I know you're going to go after me on some of these players, but I ain't going to let you breathe either. So get ready for that. <laughs> Let's do it. Brian brought us on All Twitter. Right, B-R-Y and brought us on Twitter. Uh, 105.3 yeah. The Fan, G-Bag Nation, uh, Cowboys.com, Love of the Star podcast. Appreciate you, sir. Catch y'all next Take time. Take care, man.